Genshin Impact is a game famous for basing its fictional nations off of the history and cultures of real-life countries. The newest nation to be added into the game is Sumeru, the land of knowledge. As for Sumeru, it is broadly based on the regions of the Middle East, North Africa, and India. For this video, however, I am here to do an in-depth analysis of how Middle Eastern culture and history influenced the lore of Sumeru. The connections I'll be making in this video include Arabs, with both their historical advancements and Bedouin traditions, aspects of Persian culture, such as their holiday practice of no ruse, and even other ethnic groups, such as Kurds and Turkish. Timestamps will be included in the description if you would like to skip to a specific part. Also, if you would like to see videos that cover the North African and Indian influence of Sumeru's lore, please consider subscribing, as those are my current projects planned for the future. So without further ado, let's begin with the video. The first people group that we'll be covering is the Arabs, the largest ethnicity in the Middle East. We'll make several connections to this group, but the first has to be Sumeru's status as the Nation of Wisdom. Just like how Sumeru is famous for its advanced education and science, so was the Arab world. Similar to how Sumeru is known for excellent schools like the Academia and its library, the House of Dana, so were the Arabs. Arab countries such as Iraq had what was known as the Baghdad House of Wisdom, which was a private library just like the House of Dina that had countless forms of knowledge. Other famous Arab institutions that could have inspired the academia include al Qurayyina and even the famous Library of Alexandria. Speaking of Arabic scholars, some of these famous polymaths even influenced the characters we have from Sumeru. Al-Haytham, one of the academia's head scribes, seems to be named after a real Arabic scholar from the 10th and 11th centuries. His name was also Al-Haytham, who was revered as the father of modern optics as well as psychophysics. The people of Sumeru also seem similar to Arabs in terms of medicinal advancements. In the deserts of Sumeru, we have the Dar al-Shifa hospital, the only actual hospital we see in all of Devat. The doctors here would treat Elazar patients with different medicinal foods. Likewise, Arab scientists were the first in our world to create the modern concept of a hospital, or a facility dedicated to treating the ill or wounded. Just like the people of Sumeru, Arabs also used herbal and medicinal food to treat sick patients. In addition to this, Arab astronomy was also another form of wisdom that is connected in Sumeru. Characters such as Ataria make mention of how stars are an important part of Aramite culture. Arabs were also famous for using stars to navigate across the desert and ocean. These scholarly advancements in astronomy eventually led to the Arabs creating useful navigation tools, such as the geared astrolabe that would be adopted by Europe during the age of exploration. Speaking of the Aramites, they could represent a specific group of Arabs from the real world. Arabs are a large group of people, but the specific Arabic group that Aramites could have been inspired by are the Bedouin Arabs. So, let's analyze how Aramite and Bedouin culture are so similar. The first similarities between these two groups is that they are both nomadic. To be nomadic means to have no permanent home, but rather, nomadic peoples are wanderers who move from place to place in search of proper resources. In fact, Bedouin comes from the word Bedou or Badawi, which means one who lives in the open desert. Likewise, Aramites in Sumeru are also known as desert dwellers who also wander the desert in a similar manner to Bedouins. Furthermore, Aramite characters such as Dia also seem to follow the nomadic lifestyle. Once Dunyarzad recovered from Elazar, Dia abandoned her work as a domestic bodyguard. This is because she prefers to live an open and mobile lifestyle where she has the liberty to choose where she goes. This ultimately shows how the free-spirited Aramites follow the same nomadic preferences of traditional Bedouins. Perhaps the most famous aspect about Aramite culture is their status as adept and elite mercenaries, which are fighters that lend their skills to anyone who will offer the best pay. Aramites are known for being some of the best fighters in all of Devat, and because of this, their skills are sought after by a plethora of different employers. Likewise, Bedouin Arabs were also renowned for their status as some of the best mercenaries in the Middle East. Just like how Aramite mercs would also be hired to protect roads, guard Sumeru city, and act as personal bodyguards, Bedouin mercenaries too would be hired to protect caravans on trade routes, act as bodyguards, and even fight for other sultanates across South Asia. Both groups even have a traditional sword dance, known in Arabic as the Ardha, which connects the Bedouins to their origin as respectable warriors. Although Bedouins and Aramites may seem fierce and merciless as rugged mercenaries, they do share a very wholesome similarity, that being hospitality. Allow me to explain. In the country of Jordan, 
nomadic Bedouins are said to cherish personal friendships more than actual money. This is because cash is not worth much in the desert, but a loyal friend that could protect and provide for you is. That is why Jordanian Bedouins give more importance to close relationships than they do with money. But how is this seen in the Aramites? For this similarity, we'll have to take a look at Dia. During the main Sumeru Archon quests, the Traveler asks Dia about how much money her mercenary services would cost if she were to protect them in the desert. Just like in Bedouin culture, she doesn't ask for money from the Traveler, but instead requests for payment in the form of a simple smile, a sign of trust and friendship. Hmm, how much do I want? Hey, how about paying me with a smile? What do you say? So in the end, Dia's cherishment of the Traveler's loyalty and closeness, more than real gold, connects her to one of the most heartwarming parts of Bedouin culture. Besides Bedouin culture practices, much of the aesthetic and design choices across Sumeru also come from the Arabs. Many of the businesses across the city and Port Ormos possess different incense burners. These are Arab censers known as bahors, which are also signs of hospitality if presented to a guest. Clothing choices across Sumeru also go in line with Arab tradition, with some Sumerians wearing a traditional kandura. The boats that trade at Port Ormos also follow the design of Latin ships, which were the triangular sails invented by Arab sailors. Even the canyon located in the Sumeru Desert is reminiscent of the El Sikh Canyon in Petra Jordan. The Arab influence does not stop at aesthetics, but even goes as far as Sumeru's food culture. Some Bedouin-inspired dishes we see in Sumeru include aru mixed rice, which could be based off makluba. Just like how this aru rice was made by the desert wanderers of Aru village, makluba is a staple creation eaten by the Bedouins that wander the Levantine and Arabian deserts. Another native Bedouin food in Sumeru is the pita bread, which is flat and unleavened, making it easy for these desert wanderers to carry it on their journeys. The round taboon ovens that are used to make this Arabic flatbread are also copied when designing the appearance of Sumeru's cooking stoves. Even the teapots at the Puspu Cafe and Labad's Tavern are the iconic Dalat teapots found across Arab countries. Although these are indigenously Bedouin, the other Arab foods on this list are of Turkish origin. This is because the Turkish or Ottoman Empire occupied much of the Middle East and therefore influenced the culture there. In spite of their Turkish origin, these foods have a big role in modern Arab tradition. These foods include shawarma and its famous vertically rotating spits. However, my personal favorite has to be baklava, which has a signature taste produced by pistachios and sweet syrup. So now that we covered the Arab influence of Sumeru, let's cover how Persians and other ethnic groups across the Middle East inspired the world building behind Sumeru. First of all, Persians are the native ethnic group of what is now modern-day Iran. Please note that Persians are not Arabs, but still Middle Eastern. Many of the Persian culture references we see in Sumeru are in Nilu's character design. Much of Nilu's aesthetic and characteristics are associated with the lotus flower. In Persian folklore, lotuses symbolize feminine grace, which is fitting for a beautiful dancer such as Nilu. After all, Nilu literally means lotus in the Persian language, and is derived from the popular Iranian name Nilufar. In a similar manner, the horns on Nilu's crown are another symbol of beauty in Persian folklore. Another comparison between Nilu and Persian culture has to be their dance, which is choreographically similar to Persian dance. Take a look at her spin, arm crossing, and even drop. However, the most intriguing similarity between Nilu and Persian dance is their origin story. This is because Nilu's festival of Sabzerus seems to be based on Noruz, which is the Persian springtime new year. You see, Sabzerus in the Persian language literally translates to Day of Grass, since it celebrates the birth of the grass or dendro god Kusanali. Similarly, one of the main Noruz traditions includes displaying a tray of lentil or wheat grass called a sabze on an altar known as a haft scene. Just like how Sabzerus celebrates the birth of Nahida, the grass on a Nauru's haft scene symbolizes the birth of a new year. This use of sacred grass therefore makes Nauru's the literal day of grass, just like Sabzerus. Furthermore, haft scene altars are also decorated with Persian flowers called sunballs, which inspire the design of the Padisaras that Nilu loves so much. In addition to Persians, other ethnic groups across the Middle East and Central Asia also celebrate Nauru's. This includes Kurds, Balochis, Kazakhs, and many more. Besides Nilu, other characters in the game also seem to be of Persian origin. Dunyarzad and her last name Homayani are from the Persian language, with her last name meaning royalty. 
She even goes as far as to wear a purple dress, which is a color that symbolizes the very concept of royalty in Persian culture. Other Persian characteristics include Kaveh, who was an architect in a similar manner to Persian mythology's Kaveh the blacksmith. Furthermore, Ferizan, whose status as the academia head machinist or engineer, could be a connection to ancient Persia's major technological contributions. Even more Persian aesthetics are placed around Sumeru. If we take a look at Sumeru's bazaar, the vendors sell items such as Persian rugs. In fact, these elaborate carpets are some of the most intricate and well-made in the world, with Persian rugs being one of the main exports of Iran. Also, much of the buildings across Sumeru follow the Persian styles of architecture. This includes the academia ceiling, using the Persian Iwan style, and even the lighthouses at Port Ormos, which follow the Razi style of Persian architecture. Furthermore, even more food from Sumeru seems to be heavily influenced by Persian culture. If we take a look at Nilu's specialty dish, Swirling Steps, and the original Padi Sawa Pudding, they are based on the Persian dessert called Shole Zard. This is because both of them are puddings that use identical ingredients. Sumeru's pudding uses the flavor of a Sumeru rose, much like how Shole Zard and other Iranian delicacies use rose water as a sweetener. Also, the horizontal kebab stoves seem to be cooked in the same way that Persian kefta or kubide is cooked. Other Persian foods include tashin, a traditional Persian rice dish filled with meat and garnished with flowers. Thank you guys so much for reaching the end of the video. I put a lot of effort into the researching and editing process of what I do. So, if you enjoyed this presentation, please feel free to share it with your friends who also enjoy Genshin Impact. Also, if you'd like to see more comparisons between Genshin and real-life cultures and history, please consider subscribing as more videos will be on the way. I would like to take this time as well to promote our Genshin Discord, the Sumeru Academia. It is a large Genshin community, that is a great place if you are a fellow lore enthusiast. The link to join will be in the description, so please stop by the server if you are looking for more Genshin friends. Thank you guys so much, and I'll see you in our next video.